In this video, I'd like to consider the first law of thermodynamics, which is known as the conservation of energy. And I'd like to consider it in its global form and its local form as we will employ it in continued mechanical theories. So we'll start out the construction of these, this law by looking at a deformed body Vt, so at some moment time t, and we'll look at a, a part of that body Pt. Uh, now, there are two ways of, of storing energy or having energy in, in Pt. One is by internal energy, so we'll, we'll say that the total internal energy is equal to the integral of the internal energy density per unit mass multiplied by the mass times the volume. So that gives us rho epsilon m. So epsilon m is the internal energy density per unit mass. Multiply that by the density gives us internal energy per unit volume. And then if I integrate over the volume, I'll get the total internal energy that's there. The other way that I can store up energy in the material in, in PT is by a kinetic energy. And so the kinetic energy is going to be some summation of 1 half mv squared. So you can think of rho dv as the mass of a little bit of material inside my part. I multiply it by one half the square of the velocity, so one half the norm of u dot squared, and then I integrate over the part, and that will give me the total kinetic energy in the part. Uh, so the total energy is just simply the sum of the internal energy plus the kinetic energy. And the first law says that the time rate of change of this total energy is equal to the rate of adding energy to the part. So that's, our, that's a form of the global statement of the conservation of energy, also known as the first law of thermodynamics. So let's uh, expand this out a little bit. So let's first only consider mechanical sources to uh, the rate of work being done on the part under consideration. And so we'll, we'll call that WEXT, so this is the external power. And we'll start with work that we do on the body via body forces. And so remember that power is force times velocity. So B naught times DV gives me a force. And if I dot that with the velocity, that's going to give me the power being input to the part uh, by the body forces, and I can add that up over the part. So I can integrate that over PT, and that gives me the power associated with the body forces. And I can do the same thing with surface tractions. So the traction times dA is a force acting on a part of the surface. I, I dot that with the velocity, so U dot, and then I integrate over the surface, and that will give me the power or the rate of work that I'm expending on this section of material from surface tractions. So the first law then, just only accounting for mechanical forces, says the time rate of change of E plus K is equal to WEXT. So EXT standing for external forces. Um, I can fill in for each one of these terms uh, via their integral, integral expressions. So putting it all together here. So just grabbing the the two integrals from the previous slide and the two that I just introduced above. And now just recall that if I have uh, an integral, a time derivative of an integral where the domain of integration is time dependent, but the integrand involves the density and some arbitrary function f, I can do a change of variables to make that integral now occur over the reference positions, and I'll get the Jacobian determinant sitting inside here. So now it's with respect to the reference volume, dVr. And that then says, noting that rho j is the reference density rho r, I can now have rho r sitting here. And now I can pull the, the time derivative underneath the integral sign. So that tells me that the integral over p of rho r f dot dvr is equal to what I started with here. And I can then push the integral back and rewrite it over 
the deformed body, and I end up with an integral uh, over PT of rho f dot dv. So it really just says that if you have this structure to your, your integral and you're taking a time derivative of it, you can move that time derivative on the inside where you just simply apply it to everything in the integrand other than the density. So I'll go ahead and apply that to the first integral here and the second integral here. So if I do it on the first integral, I'll just put the time derivative on epsilon m, the internal energy density. And then in the second integral, I have two places where I can take time derivatives. One will be on this u dot, and the other one will be on that u dot. So there'll be two of those. That's why the, this one half has disappeared. And I get rho u dot dotted with the acceleration. And on the right-hand side, I can replace the traction with his expression in terms of the stress, so using Cauchy's law. And then I can apply the divergence theorem to write that then not as an integral of surface, but one over the domain there. So applying the divergence theorem results in this relationship here. So, and it, that's easiest seen by writing it out additionally. Okay, now I can now cancel a bunch of terms. If you look at the second term over here, the first term on the right-hand side and the, and the second term on the right-hand side, you'll notice that those are the equilibrium equation, uh, namely divergence sigma plus body force is equal to density times acceleration, but dotted with u dot. But that's not going to change anything. I can gather all those terms together and factor out the u dot, and so those three terms have to cancel. So I can then take this first term over here and the surviving term on the right hand side and apply the localization theorem because this relationship here holds for all parts PT, subset of BT. And that tells me that rho epsilon m dot is equal to D double contracted with sigma, where D is the symmetric part of the velocity gradient. So that, that this is just a definition here. So D is something that's called the rate of deformation tensor. So, yeah. so D is the rate of deformation tensor, and this term here, D double contracted with sigma, is known as the stress power. So this expression here that we've derived, this is really the local balance of energy in our system. And now, just to be clear here, though, I, I've only considered mechanical sources of doing work on this part of the body that I'm interested in. So there are other, there are other ways to uh, impart energy to a part of the body that we also have to take into account. So let's do that on the next slide, and that will give us additional terms on this relationship here. So let's allow for heat transfer in addition to mechanical work. So we'll have the time rate of change of the total internal energy plus the kinetic energy is equal to this external mechanical working plus some heating or heat transfer applied to the section of the body that we're interested in. And the way that we can write that down is that there, there can be a volumetric heating of the body. So and we'll represent that by the symbol little r. So that's going to be uh, energy input per unit volume per unit time into the body. So say from a chemical reaction or uh, thermal radiation or something of that nature. And then there can also be energy flux, which will denote by the symbol Q. So it's a vectorial quantity, it's a flux. So it, it's, a, it's energy per unit area per unit time. And so the flux coming out of the body is going to be, or the section of the body that we're interested in, is Q dot N. So R again is the rate of heating per unit volume. So it's energy per unit time per unit volume. And Q is the heat flux, and so that's energy per unit time per unit area. I can now write the, the total heat input into the body, or the rate of heat input to the body. I can take this last term over here, and I can use the divergence theorem on it, so I can rewrite it as an integral over the part that I'm interested in of R minus divergence of Q. If I put 
use stick that into the local localization theorem with respect to what we had before I now get two extra terms on the right hand side here so I get rho times the time rate of change of the internal energy density per unit mass is equal to the stress power plus any volumetric heating minus the divergence of the heat flux so this is this is my local form of the first law And the power of this expression here is that it allows us to understand how energy moves around in the body in a point-wise sense because it's not an integral expression over a finite chunk of material. It's something that has to hold true point by point in the body.